All right, we're going to turn the corner this morning and talk about church membership a little bit. This is exciting. We get to welcome approximately 20 people this morning to an intentional commitment to Grace Bible Church. And I just want to put in front of us this morning some of the indications we have in the New Testament of how church membership is appropriate, uh, why church membership in a formal way um, is very biblical. And I want to highlight a few of the things that we cover in the membership class just by way of bullet point, and and we'll expand on a couple of these. Uh, When you open to the book of Acts, and we're not going to read the whole book of Acts right now, I just want to survey a couple of highlights there, uh, that as the church is birthed in Acts 2, it's recorded throughout the book of Acts from that point forward that, that the people that are participating in the local church in Jerusalem are known cared for, and counted. And I know in the 20th, 21st century America, we have kind of the renegade, lone wolf Christianity. Uh, It sort of goes with the independent American spirit, you know, break out on your own, do your own thing, be enterprising. Um, That is not the New Testament model of Christian to church relationships. You don't get to... Do church on your own and have it be church. And so every time you see the church in the New Testament, it is a localized assembly of called out people. The New Testament church is comprised of believers. That's different than thinking about a church building where there are believers and unbelievers in it. We love for unbelievers to be here with us in this building on a Sunday morning, but Theologically, they're not the church. The church itself properly requires regenerate membership. That is, people who are born again by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But these believers were numbered, and the church knew who they were. You can look at Acts 2, 46, Acts 4, 4, Acts 6, 1, Acts eleven twenty one. 21. If you want those references, you can get a copy of my notes uh, afterwards. Converts, believers in Jesus Christ, were cared for throughout the book of Acts. That presupposes that people knew who they were and knew what their needs were. Believers deliberately and visibly associated with the church. And I say deliberately because in Acts 5, God dropped Ananias and Sapphira. They lied to the Holy Spirit. They deceived the people in the church. They wanted to look as cool as Barnabas by letting everybody think that they had given 100% of the proceeds of a piece of land they did not have to sell. And because of their deception, God held them accountable and dropped them. The response is that believers joined in greater number to this fellowship, which would be a scary place to join if you weren't truly a believer in Jesus Christ. And the world around them grew in their respect of them and kept their distance. That's an interesting dichotomy. The church grew. Uh, Believers had to deliberately associate with the church. Why? Because it's scary in there. There's accountability in there. But also because there was persecution outside. It was not easy to be a Christian. And in Bible Bible Belt American Christianity, it can be easy or acceptable or normal to go to church. That was not the case in the first century. There was a cost to assembly, and so believers were deliberate in it. Nowhere in the New Testament is there any evidence that the church was designed by God to be a loose affiliation of people who generally have more or less the same beliefs. No, there was intentional connectedness, known connectedness in the body of Christ. In a local assembly. 120 times the the word ecclesia or church occurs in the New Testament. And and it refers overwhelmingly to a specific gathered body of believers that could be known and identified and counted. And in the handful of times, maybe 15 to 17 times, where it refers to Christians in general wherever they are, even those references find themselves located. For instance, 1 Corinthians 1 and 2 Corinthians 1, both in the introduction, has the introductory phrase, greetings to the church as it finds itself at Corinth. Right? And, and I know there are Christians who want to make an argument from the universal church. Wherever I am, if I'm born again, I am the church. That's not the New Testament model. The New Testament church gathers and gathers intentionally. And we see this in the analogies given for the church. The church is a flock. That is, sheep 
belonged to a shepherd. They were around each other. They were collected and gathered. A body is another one of the metaphors of the church. Thumbs just don't run off on their own, or they're not supposed to. They belong in an interconnected, interdependent way to the rest of the body. And a building is another analogy, not a bunch of loose bricks strewn around the city, but gathered together and assembled in an edifice. These analogies all point to an intentional, collected gathering of believers. And then, of course, you have instructions to leaders in the church. Acts 28.20 is especially haunting. Pastors shepherd the flock of God, which he purchased with his own blood. How can pastors shepherd sheep that they do not know, that are not affiliated and intentionally gathered and accountable and connected? It's impossible. I know that the, the style of church that the church has put forward in the last couple of years is a really gifted speecher and a really cool band and an entertainment product that you come and you get and there's a give and take relationship because you're the consumer, we're the producers, and if you don't like it, you'll walk. That's not the New Testament model. The New Testament model requires shepherding and sheep willing to be shepherded. And then the instructions for those under the leadership require intentional, not casual, commitment to the local church. Hebrews 13, 17, submit to your leaders. Uh, you, can't to, you can't submit to leaders in the church if you're not connected to a church. You can't submit to leaders in the church if you're not intentionally connected to a specific local body of believers. And then, of course, you have the one another commands in the New Testament that require an intentional, tangible commitment to a local body of believers. Love one another, serve one another, confess your sins to one another, etc. And these things can't be done in abstentia. Did I say that word right? They can't be done when you're not around each other. We've got to be together, intentionally connected as a local body. Now, the New Testament does not demand uh, that a church have a membership class that lasts six weeks long. Uh, or an elder interview process, the New Testament. I can't find a chapter and verse that says, all the members, candidates, please come stand up front and we'll read the church covenant together. But that's what we're going to do. <laughs> it's not anti-biblical. It may be extra-biblical, but it is the means and the tools that the elders at this church use to help believers connect intentionally and tangibly to the local assembly, which is the church. So all of the membership candidates who will be coming forward in a moment have been through the membership class. They have been uh, interviewed personally by one of the pastors of the church. And I'll just tell you some of the interview questions. We want to hear a clear testimony of God's grace in your life, right? This is how we're uh, trying the best that we can to produce a regenerate local church membership. Someone needs to be able to give a clear and credible testimony of faith in Jesus Christ, uh, we also like to know where you've come from. Sometimes people leave a church because they didn't like being shepherded there. They go to another church and they feel like it's a clean slate. We just want to make sure that uh, where you've come from um, is okay with you running away from them. <laughs> or uh, sometimes we do a little bit of background work on that. Um, a number of the people becoming members today, we as a church are receiving commendation letters from their previous pastors which is so sweet. There's a biblical precedent for that. Uh, it is good for shepherds to make sure that sheep are handed off well when they leave from one geographical location to another. And so we have some of those here uh, even this morning. And then we like to find out the relationship of people who are becoming members to the doctrine of the church. That gives uh, some assurance to all of us who already are members that those who are becoming members are in agreement with what the elders at Grace Bible Church will be teaching. It doesn't mean you have to have mastered all of the theological categories that are in the membership booklet and the class. It doesn't mean you have to be able to uh, teach the equipping hour class that John Anderson taught this morning. Um, who could be a member? Right? Um, but what it means is that you have to be in agreement that the teaching role in the church is the role of the shepherds here and the doctrine that they've laid out is agreeable 
This is where I want to be. This is where I want to learn. This is where I want to grow. And I'm not going to contravene those things. And that gives a great ground of assurance for all of us who are members that those who are becoming members have given testimony to God's grace and agree with the doctrine and the philosophy of the church. That removes significant assumptions for us as we labor together for the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We also like to find out where um, people are serving. In the membership class, I like to uh, recruit for the logistics coordinator position in Papua New Guinea, and I like to recruit for uh, NGM service, and I like to recruit for somebody who can um, take a, a, a bilingual ministry and run with it, uh, do an English as a second language evangelistic outreach course. Any takers? Hands. So these... Precious sheep have been through this process, and I'm going to invite them to come forward at this time. So I'll call your names, and you can come up. And while those who are in your family under 18 uh, are not eligible for membership yet, uh, you may bring your kids up so they're not alone and so that we get to see all their lovely faces. And so let me invite some friends up, Chris and Marilyn Allen, Adam and Michelle Anderson, Beth Baker, Daniel and Sarah Bruce, Carlos and Layla Gonzalez, Brianna Hutspeth, Jonathan Kelso, Jackson and Ashley Kennedy, Stephen Elaine Kovac, Emmanuel Nogueda, Michael and Whitney Romero. Come on up. And uh, we're going to put up on the back screen and the front screens here the church covenant that we read together. These are a set of commitments we make to one another. And I'd like to invite all of you who already are members. Oh, John and April Anderson. <laughs> You're not on my list. But, but if we go on having a pastor who's not a member, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> we did interview him and her and them. All right, and now everybody who already is a member, please stand, and we're going to read this together out loud. Here we go. Humbly trusting that God has graciously brought us to repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and having been baptized upon our profession of faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we do now, in dependence upon God's gracious help, solemnly enter into covenant with one another. We will pray for and be diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the church, being a peacemaker with all in the church. We will walk together in brotherly love, exercising an affectionate care and watchfulness over each other, faithfully encouraging, admonishing, and entreating one another as occasion may require, seeking with tenderness and sympathy to bear each other's burdens and sorrows, being slow to take offense and quick to forgive and reconcile with one another. We will strive for the advancement of this church for Christ's sake by not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together by remaining faithful to God's word concerning our biblical doctrines, church discipline, the Lord's table, and believer's baptism, by exercising the spiritual gifts given to us as members of the body of Christ, by giving cheerfully and sacrificially to support the gospel ministry of the church as it extends both into this community and the nation's. We will seek to live boldly as witnesses for Jesus Christ where God has placed us, living a transformed life and proclaiming the gospel that the mission of Jesus Christ might advance in this world. We will persevere in raising our children under God's watchful care that they might, by His grace, repent and believe in the gospel of His Son, Jesus Christ. We will... If we move from this church, as soon as possible, unite with another local church where we can obediently live under God's word in fellowship and where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant in the body of Christ. Amen. I'd like to uh, invite the elders who are here to come on up and... Um,
I think we'll give the right fist bump of fellowship. Um, maybe even the distanced fist bump of fellowship, elders, as you come forward and uh, welcome these new ones into fellowship at Grace Bible Church. We'll have the uh, musicians come on up. Yep, we can applaud. Musicians, come on up. <laughs>